Hello, and uh, welcome to the small, somewhat truncated and hyper-efficient tutorial on using projections. Um, so one of the things that you can do when you project is that you have the ability to take uh, effectively what is a kind of a slide projection method of texturing and distribute it onto an object that uh, has uh, so that it is independent of the concern of its UV sets. So if we take a look at the, um, the basic setup of modeling and you see that uh, every model is dependent upon its UV sets here. This is the UV set for this particular object. Uh, you can see that things are sort of stretched out. So how do we take something like uh, say a face, let's say that this is a modeled low poly character's face and use a projection on it so that it then adheres to these UVs. So this is a really fast process by which you can see that. And the first thing we want to do is come in here, create another Lambert shader. Uh, I like to immediately adhere it to the object and sort of mess with the color so that you can see whether or not um, that uh, model has in fact been uh, put onto the correct geometry. Coloring it some ugly color like that is usually a good usually a good litmus test, although incredibly painful to look at. So come in here now that you've assigned it correctly and also remember to rename it. I like to use something very obvious, projection shader. Come in then to this little box which is at the far end of the color slider the checkerboard box it will ask you to create a render node. Now usually we click on file however in this case we're going to look up a utility so click in the leftmost column so that now it reads utilities and you can actually scroll down until you see projection or you can come up here into uh, this little key box here and type in proj and you can get projection. So now it is actually uh, has adhered a projection node on to this shader, which is a midwife process because we are going to read in a uh, like a, a file of a face, but we need to have this projection shader on first. Now the projection shader has no real context. It doesn't really know how big to uh, make itself on this object or the sphere. Uh, all things are kind of equal. So when you're at the point where uh, you want to adhere it to uh, you. You want to adhere this this projection utility node onto the geom. You want to tell it to put a render node on this object so that it kind of understands the collision boundaries of this object. Now, how does it do that? Well, I've clicked off in the 3D window where we were going when we were setting this thing up, and so the best way to get back into it is select the shader and then follow it down this rabbit hole here. It's no longer a checkerboard because you've already adhered something to it, so click on the arrow instead, and you'll come to this section here where it's asking you whether you want to do interactive placement or you want to fit it to the object's bounding box. So in this case, uh, I would prefer it to fit to the bounding box, and it knows the bounding box of this object because we earliest, the earliest thing we did was we contacted, we connected this shader to the object. So when I tell it to put a bounding box on this, it knows the geometry it's associated with. If you have yet to put this shader on your object, um, you're going to get a lot of confusion from Maya saying what bounding box, where, etc. And so if it throws you those errors, the first thing you want to check is to make sure that your shader has already been put onto your geometry. Uh, from here, you can simply click on Fit to Bounding Box and it says, do you want to create a placement node? Absolutely. And there we actually see uh, made manifest, not just the projection shader frame here in the 3D modeling window, but it's also here in the outliner. So it's already been sort of played, uh, put onto the sphere, and correctly so, because if you were to go to the, the front orthographic view, you can see it's automatically put pretty much to the edges of the sphere. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we want to follow this out. Go again to your hypershade, click on the shader, follow it down, 
And at this point, we want to put an image on it, uh, sort of like a face image. So under image, you now click on this checkerboard shader and do what we're usually used to, which is go up here to 2D textures, get rid of proj. Again, it's only looking for proj. And here we see our old friend, let's go to 2D textures again, file. So under file, you now have a folder icon you can click on to take you down into the recesses of all the images you have. I uploaded this uh, purple haired uh, person and I connect it with the shader and you think, oh my God, it's not working. What's wrong? Well, you have to press six. So watch what happens here when I press six. We see absolutely nothing. So those of you that are having this problem, come into your settings. You can come into Windows and come down General Editors and make sure that you got your settings, sorry, settings preferences. Come up to preferences, pops up here and go to display at the very bottom. Make sure that you're using, using OpenGL Legacy. Those of you using your own laptops, there are so many different graphics cards and rendering stations, I cannot answer them all. However, one of the things you can research is if you click on the rendering engine, you have several different options uh, depending on what you have loaded and depending on the hardware. Um, so try them all. Unfortunately, switching them over means you have to restart your machine, but take a look at it. Um, mine was fixed by clicking over to OpenGL Legacy. Now that I've saved it, restarted Maya. Yes, I did so while pausing the video. Sleight of hand. I can now press six and see this person's face. So back to said tutorial. So clicking on the object, Windows, General Editors, sorry, Modeling Editors, UV Editor, and see that this face is sort of stuck on the UVs. We don't, it's not, it's not really adhering to the UVs, because remember, this image should be pinched at the top, you know, which means that it's spread out here at the very top. So this is in no way using the UV information to map it on. It's using this projection frame. So you get an idea, okay, that looks pretty cool, but what happens when I finally bake it onto the UV sets? So let's take a look at how you would make it so that you can render these, bake them effectively onto the UV sets. And Maya is very picky, of course, so let's take a look at what you have to do. First thing you have to do is come in here to the, you can do this in the modeling window, the outliner, however you'd like. Choose the object, in this case the sphere, and then come into the hyper shader and I hold down the um, shift button and it allows me to also select the shader. So again, you have to have the object and the shader selected and those are the only two things you can have selected, none of these other things. Then you come up to edit, come down to convert to file texture, Maya software, go to the options for it It'll bring up a whole bunch of options. What you need to do is come down here to 512 by 512, click on Fill Texture Seams, go to JPEG, and watch what happens when I come in here and I press uh, Convert. What you're going to see is that this face, which just normally is spread like a uh, cut and pasted like a picture frame, will now be baked onto the UV sets. Now there's going to be no discernible change here in the modeling window because it's meant to look like the same thing, but technically it will be an entirely different shader. I'm having a little trouble here with the outliner, so I'm simply going to squeeze it down so it's here in the corner. So watch what happens here when I press convert. It's thinking and then boom. Wow, that is very different in the UV texture window. So you've got this sort of test tube looking individual here and uh, you also have pretty much the same look here. What Maya did is it created a totally new shader based off of the original one you put on there. And this, if you double click it, will take you down the rabbit hole to its new JPEG. So take a look and search for this name. Uh, that JPEG is the one that it created for you that is now aligned perfectly to the UV sets that you have on your object. So what this would allow you to do is do a projection for the front, get one picture, uh, you can come in here and reassign this projection shader again, and uh, you can 
either make a duplicate of this or change what it's using for a reference so that I'm now going to come in here and grab a picture from the back of someone's head. And now I've got this back of someone's head here. And that will allow me to bake this out so that I have another texture that is just, um, I think I did the wrong thing here. So that this is going to bake out, there we are. So it's going to bake out, and again, this is not size, this is just sort of technically thrown in there very quickly. I would need to have much better um, kind of setup to make sure that it covers the entire bloody head, but I haven't, so I'm gonna just kind of uh, roughly scale it. Don't do this at home. This is, this is not endorsed. You need to have your act together a lot better than I do this morning. So I'm just doing this as a test to show you that you can come in here, reassign the projections, uh, come in here and rebake, and in each case it's going to bake out a separate shader. There's another one now. Look at all the shaders we're making. That is just the back of the head, and this one is called Projection Sphere 2. So I'm going to have to look for these on my PC, Projection 1 and 2, and they will give me um, some images, one from the back of the head, one from the front. I take them into a paint program, and just like uh, we've done in previous projects, paint one out using the other one, so that you've got a head and you've got uh, the back of someone's, you've got a face and the back of someone's head in the same shader. Um, how do you do that? We can do that really quickly. Uh, give me a second here. One of the things you can use, by the way, to find uh, your images really quickly is just click on the folder icon. It actually um, sometimes will come up in the folder that you need. You also should be able to um, maybe drag these into an area where you want to use them. But just for now, I can not search so much as just cut and paste this address. It goes right there. I now have these weird projections, very cool. And I can open them up with, um, I've got Photoshop, but I can do the same thing in GIMP or dozens of other paint programs. So I will bring them both in uh, Photoshop. So in this case, I've got them both in Photoshop now. Um, and I'm going to simply grab one and put it over the other and then paint out the mask. Please understand this is not done with any uh, serious uh, artistic <laughs> attempt at being good. I'm just going to put in a basic mask so that you can see how quickly this can be put together. So there we are. We got the front and the back of the main characters. How did I do this? Well, you can go back and look at the car tutorial because we talked about how to do it in both Photoshop as well as GIMP. But it's something you should be able to do with relative ease. Um, I like to save things out as JPEGs because it's just not that impressive. So face, texture, and then get rid of this, come back into Maya, and we will make a final shader as well. Uh, come in here to Lambert, and this is my UV mapped head shader. And that I'm simply going to read in the usual file, go down the folder structure, come to my desktop where I've saved it. Face texture is already there. And now I get to read this onto the geometry. And from the front, we now have a face. And from the back, we now have a head projection. Which, by the way, was is pretty cool given that we don't really, we're not utilizing any projections right now. This is sort of the end product. So if I had, if I'd done my homework and made sure that this was the right size, and my images were the same uh, size as the model, because I'm constructing the model itself from that kind of template, everything would match up. So again, this is not meant for any artistic integrity. It's just meant to show you technically how to utilize the projection technique so you can slowly work towards something that allows you to have a fairly complex texture like a face projected onto a model um, where the UVs are flayed in a different way than, um, than, than something that's sort of intuitive. So in this case, we've got the image and it's stretching in all the places we've asked it to. 
and I could have ostensibly an ear here and these are put together and I've painted this hair purple so that you start to get a nice uh, work towards a nice texture for a singular object. And that's basically the projection technique.